it all boils down to the question of free choice and free will versus the benevolent determinism imposed by an omniscient and omnipotent being. What is better, to have the choice and be damned, almost inevitably, as in the biblical narrative of the Garden of Eden, or to succumb to the superior wisdom of a supreme being? The choice always involves a dilemma. It is the conflict between two equivalent states, two weighty decisions whose outcomes are equally desirable and two identically preferable courses of action. Where there is no such equivalence, there is no choice, merely the preordained, given full knowledge, exercise of a preference or an inclination. Bees don't choose to make honey. A fan of a football club does not choose to watch a specific football game. He is motivated by a clear inequity between the choices that he faces. He can, for instance, read a book or go to the game. His decision is clear, but it is also predetermined by his predilection and by the inevitable and invariable implementation of the principle of pleasure. There is no choice here. It is all rather automatic. He is bound to go to the game. But compare this to the choice some victims had to make between two of their children in the face of Nazi barbarity and brutality. Which child to sentence to death? Which one to sentence to life? Now this is a real choice. It involves conflicting emotions of equal strength. One must not confuse decisions, opportunities and choice. Decisions are the mere selection of courses of action. The selection can be the result of a choice or the result of a tendency conscious, unconscious, biological, genetical, culturally determined. Opportunities are current states of the world, which allow for a decision to be made and to affect the future state of the world. Choices are our conscious experience of moral or other dilemmas.